This is Magic and Mayhem. In this audio cast series, we talk about a lot of different things, and I'm exploring what's the right venue, what's the right format, and literally what's the right topics to talk about that will make people intrigued and interested enough to stay tuned during the entire audio cast, whether it's three minutes or whether it's ten minutes or whether it's literally half an hour. Openly, I've got a lot of ideas going on in my mind because of all the things that I'm literally going through as a person and as a professional. And I'd like to talk a little bit about those in a way that makes sense to the people that are listening and without it being overly selfish with regard to my life. I do like to share a little bit about my life authentically and transparently so that you know that I'm a real human being, not trying to sell anything other than a simple modest product that may or may not work for you. And you have the little right to investigate on your own to decide whether or not cellular health care is important to preventive maintenance in long-term health care issues that can occur as we age. We all feel old. We all feel arthritis. We all feel all sorts of things. Who knows? If literally you've only eaten healthy foods your entire life, you might be in the greatest shape ever. There's also the possibility that those healthy foods are doing something to damage your cells because it's not exactly right for you. But who's to say? The reality is that as we age, we lose our abilities sometimes, we lose our energy sometimes, we lose the rights in our life sometimes from the people around us. So we're going to talk a lot about those sort of things, but in literally today's audio cast, we're talking practically about homelessness. How does homelessness really occur? I mean, think about it. Everybody starts out typically in a home. They're born into a home, they are raised in a home, and they literally go on in a home. In order to have a safe place for food and shelter and to stay warm in the cold. But how does someone lose their home? Long time ago, I was absolutely mystified by a statistic I had seen that literally people who had a particular condition were often homeless, and I couldn't understand why. Now I do. I practically do now. The reason is twofold. Either someone attacks their life for what they have as a condition, or they literally lose their life in terms of a loss of a sort of a personal nature. And in that time of grief and discovery and all sorts of emotions that occur through that process, they literally lose the rights or the will to live. They also lose kind of the will to be productive, and the people around them don't really recognize the loss. And in that case, they don't really surround them and give them lots of love. It's not the point that they don't actually give them opportunities to kind of improve their performance or just go through the loss and then get back on track. In my particular case, as a self-employed individual, my little situation was the grief was overwhelming. And the people in my life were my clients mainly, so it's a little hard to ask clients for more money when they're already paying a fair and reasonable wage. At the same time, while you're feeling that grief and loss, you're not the most stellar networking individual. You literally don't feel like getting up and preparing yourself perfectly, and sometimes you're just like, screw it, I'm tired of this little crap that is such a game of networking. People are so busy saying, gosh, I don't know you well enough to give you that contact, and that is such a lie that you just want to hurl at them. But you can't, because you have to be polite and nice and, and professional. The absolute truth is we do not have the little right to say to someone, I am not giving you information because I don't know you well enough. What that literally says is, I don't think you're good enough for me to introduce you to my family, friend, or colleague. And that's actually kind of an insult. While it might be a reasonable feeling, while you might have done something that transgressed against that person, the absolute truth is you don't have any way of knowing whether or not the person the person could be introduced to, now literally listen to this very carefully, might actually like the person that you're having challenges with might actually be a better fit to them interpersonally, or might actually have a job that they could literally do to help them in their own goals in their own life. You see, what that does is it literally says, I'm taking away the rights of this other person to make a decision about you. Now think about that really carefully. One more time. You are literally saying that while I have this incredible networking database of at least 250 people is what the common thought is about how many people people know in terms of spheres of influence when we talk about it in intellectual terms. The absolute reality is that the person might have a 35,000 person database or a 7,000 database. But literally what you're saying is I am Lord of all these people and I don't think that you are right for them. But practically, who gave you the personal or professional decision-making power to take away the opportunity of two people to meet and decide whether or not they liked each other? My late father, Bill Ensign, would often say in his salesman training days for me that when two people are meet, one of them is sold. So think about that for just a moment. When two people meet, one of them is sold. It means that a person has an agenda, usually when they try to meet someone. They either like how they look, or they like how they feel, or they need to talk to them about something for their own business to grow, or they literally have something to sell, and there's always a good reason in the business world. 
You see, just because you're not ready to buy today doesn't mean that you won't buy a little later. And just because you've got something to sell today doesn't mean someone is ready to, to re receive that item today. But that doesn't mean that the relationship can't begin. It doesn't mean that the relationship can't go on. And literally, it doesn't mean that later in life, at some point, someone's going to go, you know, I know a guy who does that. Let me help you. And that's literally what we're talking about today is that's how homeless begins. Because people literally don't help a person professionally advance. That's the first reason. The second reason literally is that our computerized data applicant tracking systems are ruining the opportunities of people who are seasoned in life. First of all, it's expecting everybody to know the profession of how to write a resume, which we all sort of know what it looks like, but in truth, they're all the damn same. They all say virtually the same thing, and it doesn't allow the person's individual soul, personality, communication style, uh, dress code, fashion, whatever you want to call it, that matches a company to shine through. Yes, there are definitely creative resumes for the creative field, but then it becomes a competition of who's is the most creative, but then the actual viewer is very subjective. Do they like it or not? You see, practically, the only way to determine whether or not someone is literally good enough to work on a project is to actually give them a little sampling of that project and say, hey, let's talk about this project we're working on. What would you literally suggest that we do for this particular thing? Now, on the one hand, it's not fair to get free information from somebody completely and not pay them for that information. But on the other hand, it allows you to see whether or not the person really has the skill sets. In some cases, when I got that opportunity to have the interview, the interviewer at first didn't think I was the right fit for the company. But then literally after listening to me for a while talk, they thought, gosh, this person actually might be right for the company, but maybe not in this position. And that's important. You see, you can't discover a person's skill sets if you're not willing to listen and ask them the right questions. And let's face it, the do you have the proper transportation is a childish question that those 30, 20 to 30-something recruiters should be slapped for. Most people as adults strive to have an automobile of some sort. They literally know that if they have to, they can walk to work, or they literally can take a bus, or they know how to put themselves in a mobile transportation mode, such as calling their mom and saying, Mom, I need to ride to work. So let's get rid of those questions that are dumb. Let's focus on the questions that matter. Let's give people projects to actually prove they can do the job. Because you might give somebody a project and they might totally fail, but if you're giving three people that same project, you've got one of the best to choose from. And that's how we produce better opportunities for people looking for employment. The third reason that homelessness occurs is that literally those folks struggle with asking for help. And by the time they eventually finally go, I really need some help, I've got to ask someone, the relationships with which they could gain help from are not quite as the same as they were months ago because they literally stepped out of the roles that they were once in with those people. They're now in a different functioning mode because they're literally looking for a job or employment or new clients, and that makes it an awkward relationship. You see, we've sort of gotten away from society recognizing that poverty exists and that poverty needs to be helped by the people in our lives. Many churches have these poverty programs, but they literally want you to give away all your information, give your social security number, they check you out with police, they do all this stuff within church, and you're just like, this is not what Jesus would do. If a person literally says to you, I could really use a can of food right now, what would you do? Would you open your cupboard and say, here's my cupboard, pick something that fits your body style and your cellular needs right now? If it's a protein, great. If it's a vegetable, fine. If it's literally just a can of water, no problem. We really need to get back to canning water, I think, if that's even remotely possible, unless it's not possible. And I don't know technically why we don't can water, but maybe somebody else does. In truth, we need a lot of canned goods today to protect our rights to the sanitation and safety of our foods. And while my mother raised us to not like canned foods, and frankly, most of us don't, there is some canned foods that really will work in your body, but how do you choose and select that one? I could show you literally how to do it, and you'd be amazed at how much you love better you'd like the food that you're choosing. Who wants to pay for something and get it home and go, God, this was the grossest thing I ever purchased? What if there was a way to literally narrow it down to the things that your body would really like and that your taste buds would really enjoy and that your family would really consider good stuff? But again, we'll talk about the magic of love of Lord God in another way. When it comes to homelessness, there's a lot of things we can do to help, and I'll talk about that in my next audio cast. Literally, this has been Blake Enson of Blaze Communications, LLC. I hope you're having a really productive and professional day.